the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 V2 are great budget 3D printers. But what happens when you venture off to more complex materials to print with? It jams, fails, and wastes filament and time. But instead of buying a whole new printer to print what you want, what if we can upgrade your current printer for a fraction of the price and get similar results? How's it going guys, I'm Kelby, and in this video I'm going to be walking you through how to install a direct drive system on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2. This will help a lot with printing flexible filaments such as TPU, as well as giving you a more reliable extrusion, and minimizing retraction related failures. And make sure to stick around to the end because I will be talking about my favorite supporting mods to improve your prints even further. Everything that I use in this video from my PC to my 3D printer to the direct drive mod will be linked in the description of this video. Using the links that I provided down below does really help out the channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So without further ado, let's jump right into the installation. Unboxing the extruder, it comes with a direct drive assembly and a little bag of tools to help with the installation process. The assembly includes a new motor so you don't have to reuse your old one and an upgraded hot end which is much needed for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 V2. My fan assembly is taken apart but this is unneeded so you can skip that step altogether. The first thing I need to do is take off the belt from the underside of the current extruder. Then I unscrew the two screws holding the belt tensioner on. After that, disconnect the Z-axis support wheels connected to the X-axis rail using one screw on the back. Next, pull the X-axis rail towards you just enough to move the Z-axis support wheels down and out of the way. Now you can slide the old assembly off, but it will still be connected to the wires. Now turn your printer and lay it on its side. I have aftermarket quiet fans installed, but the screw locations will be in the same spot. Next, unscrew the three screws on the bottom of the motherboard cover. After those are out, move back to the top of the printer and unscrew the two screws below the bed. One in front and one further back. Move back down to the bottom of the printer and the cover should be loose. I also unscrewed the two larger screws at the front of the printer, and this allows you to pull out the motherboard a little bit, making it just that much easier to access the plugs. Now that we have the motherboard out, we need to remove the red and black wires, the two bigger rubber coated wires, the two pin connector with blue and yellow, and the two pin connector with two white wires. To disconnect the single wires, loosen the clamp screw until the wire is free to pull out. Do this with all four wires I showed and then we can move on to the two pin connectors. I cut this zip tie to make it easier to access the connectors. Now unplug the yellow and blue connector. The white connector has some hot glue holding it in, so I grabbed some needle nose pliers to get it free. This section is only needed if you have a BL or a CR touch or done any quiet fan upgrades using buck converters. I unplugged the CR touch to remove it from the current cable loom and then unscrewed the fan output wires from the buck converters because we will not be installing them in this video. Now 
Now we can remove all the wires from the loom. If you have auto bed leveling, unscrew it from your old assembly and save your cord for it. Now it's time for our new assembly. If you take a look at the wires, they are the same ones you just unplugged, making it super simple to reverse your steps from removing them. Now all you need to do is put the wires back in the same way you took them out and tighten the screws to secure it. Go ahead and plug in the yellow and blue connector as well as the white and white connector. Now all your wiring is done so you can start the reassembly. First, start out with the two screws on the front and the two screws on the top. After those, the three screws on the motherboard cover, two on the left, and one on the right. After that is done, grab the wire looms and move them out of the way and set the printer on its feet. Next, grab your new assembly and make sure you feed it above the x-axis rail. Now you can slide it on the same way you took the old one off. Now secure the Z-axis support wheels back onto the X-axis rail using the single screw on the back. As you can see, the Z-axis wants to fall because we have added another motor onto it without taking the old one off yet. Now feed your belt through the new wheels at the top and your tensioner back onto the belt. After the belt is fed through the tensioner, screw the tensioner back on so it stays. Now reattach the belt to the new assembly on both sides. You may have to adjust your tensioner to get enough slack.
After both sides of the belt are connected, tighten the belt tensioner until the belt has enough tension to not want to turn more than about 90 degrees. Now we need to pull out the bag we previously pulled out of the box and get the extruder cable extension. Unplug the old extruder cable. I use needle nose pliers for this because it was a little bit tricky to get out. and then add on the new extension. Now that it can reach your new extruder, go ahead and plug it in. Now we can remove the dead weight, which is the old Bowden extruder. When looking at it from the back, unscrew the bottom left and top right screws in either corner. And remove the tension arm and spring. Now you should have access to two more screws in the two other corners. And once those are out, the motor will drop. So be careful, especially if it has a glass bed. Now we can give it the first test. I started the auto home feature when I realized the nozzle would crash into the bed without the CR touch since I've removed the Z-axis limit switch. So I very dramatically shut it off and got back to work. I installed the CR touch and luckily it came with the correct mount for this assembly. After the CR touch is installed, if you have one, reverse the filament holder and move it to the middle. If you have auto bed leveling, reinstall the cable as well. A few zip ties later, and the cables are managed so we can start it up again. I auto homed it again with my finger on the power switch in case anything went wrong. And then after it is homed, re-level your bed and if you have auto bed leveling, make sure to recalculate the Z offset because if you don't, it will scratch your bed. Now I like to do a small CHEP cube as a test prank. And in your slicer settings, change the retraction distance down to between one to two millimeters instead of six plus. 
Since it is a direct drive, the distance that the filament has to go from the extruder is so much smaller and so that would give you way too much retraction and could cause a clog. After it's preheated, load the filament into the top and start your print. As you can see, it is printing really nicely and we'll have to come back once it's done to take measurements. If you are enjoying this video and found it useful, go ahead and hit that like button to let me know. If you want to see more 3D printer content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I do post weekly videos and tutorials. Once the print is done, we can go ahead and take measurements to see how accurate our prints are. This print turned out really well and the letters are super crisp. The measurements are 20 millimeters by 19.9 by 19.9, which is very close to being perfect. Earlier in the video, I told you to stick around so you could see my favorite supporting upgrades to make even better prints. Number one, a flexible bed. This allows you to remove prints that would normally be a pain to get off and saves your glass bed from getting scratched and or breaking. Number two, Noctua cooling fans. This makes your printer super quiet and is amazing if you have your printer in your office or bedroom. If you want to see how to do that, the link to the video will be in the description or it will be an option at the end of this video. Number three, a CR Touch. This auto bed leveling device is perfect for people who are getting really tired of re-leveling their bed after every print, or if you are consistently getting failed prints due to adhesion issues. That's the end of the list for supporting mods. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're wanting to do this mod or any of the other mods that I have listed, I will have links to all of them in the description of this video. Using the affiliate links really help out the channel and it also makes sure that you are getting the right product for the tutorial. With all that being said, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.